I think this is what parents and uh, teachers want most for our students, is to be able to go out beyond the walls of 7272 Sherbrooke Street West and to be able to model and exemplify these five characteristics. We can always spot a Loyola boy out in the community, whether he's at church or in the arena, in the theater, in his own backyard, because of the way that he conducts himself. Being loving, open to growth, religious, committed to doing justice, and being intellectually competent. And I think we're trying to teach our kids, as St. Ignatius did, to go out and to set the world on fire and to be able to model these characteristics for all of those that our boys are going to meet throughout their lives is something that is incredibly important and I think it's a real gift and it's the path that God has set for our students in order to be men for and with others. I think the grad at grad characteristics um, as they're taught to our Loyola boys are a really good way of putting a name to the values that they were brought up with. The useful part about having a name attached to a value is we're able to in various classes like religion or on retreats or in um, journals or reflections have a name for the values and the characteristics that we've built our school community on and that the students can refer to as they internalize these values in their lives during these most formative years being a teenager. But I think from a Jesuit context, what we're looking at being, when, when we say being intellectually competent, is really about how can we serve others with the knowledge that we have? How can we make the world a better place? But more importantly, it's this idea of looking at, at learning as a lifelong process and endeavor, and not just something that kind of has a goal at the end. It's something that's everlasting. We're, we're continuously growing uh, with it. But at the same time, it's how can we bring the greater glory of God here on earth? One of the fundamental aspects of being loving and open to growth is cultivating a climate of mutuality whereby you listen to the person beside you, your teacher, your coach, and understanding their perspective, not necessarily agreeing with it, but certainly othering to the point where there is a respect and a tolerance that is developed. When you see something that is not right or unjust, um, just moving away from this idea that this is awful, turn the channel off, turn the page, into maybe um, trying to put yourself in that position, understanding what the issue is, uh, and hopefully trying to do something about it. So fostering a little bit more empathy as opposed to simply not caring, which is an extreme, uh, or not knowing what to do or simply walking away from it. What I've noticed having attended Experience Week, uh, kids have uh, you know, a whole week of that, where they really get to put themselves in that position. Um, and I always like to think, and, and a lot of kids have said this too, where when they come back from Experience Week, the real experience begins because now they can see that in their day to day lives, how they put themselves in certain positions to help others. Also through their prayer life is another way that they can work on those characteristics of gratitude. What is God saying to them? How should they uh, comport themselves in the world? I would think that those are really important ways that they can develop their characteristics. What the Jesuits have done, it is a Jesuit motto, is kind of taken that man for and also added man for and with others. So it's really a question of uh, Christian, I guess, collaboration. And if you look at the grad at grad characteristics, they all feed into that idea of being a man for and with others. And out of the five, I guess the one that really stands out for me as being emblematic in terms of being a man for others is something you don't really find at other schools. It's this idea of being loving. And if you go back to the Bible, one of Jesus' great commandments is love thy neighbor. And you can't love thy neighbor if you're not a man for or with others. The question isn't so much us taking a look at the students as much as in this interview we're asking you to take a look at us. And we want to know how are we doing in the formative side of your son's life? How does, how does he do in terms of justice? How is he in terms of loving? How is he in terms of appropriating a self-sense of religion and a place of God in his life? 
those are all things that are grad, grad characteristics. Now, if he's in secondary two, he's only had a year and a bit to get a shot at it. So we don't expect much, but we do expect some changes. And we look for those changes. Now, when we come and do this perhaps later, we will look more significant changes to have happened. So what we're really looking at and talking about with our parents is, how are we doing in the formative side of your son's life? That's what this is all about. I'm floored every time I attend an alumni event, um, such as the NDG Food Bank, where tons of alumni from decades ago will come back and volunteer. Uh, it's something special when that happens. It, it, it's, it really tells me that this isn't just something you do for five years, it's something that is part of who you are. The grad or grad characteristics shape students in the becoming the best version of themselves. There are basic rules to live by, if you will. The grad or grad characteristics are actually reflected in the things we do and the things we say outside of school too. Just like going to church, you hear the teachings. The teachings aren't only applicable in the church, they're applicable in the outside world. The full Loyola experience is far deeper than surface level education. It is actually a youthful journey of self-discovery and growth guided by the grad-to-grad characteristics. And that growth sticks with students for the rest of their lives.